A quick thing before today's video, I am very proud to announce the release of the second Space Dock reference book. See the topics of popular Space Dock videos applied to the design process of an original Space Frigate, the Mischief class and its refit. Brought to life in 3D by artist Holly Jenker with extra illustrations by Ethan LaRoyth. Pledge at the Gravimetric Space Gentleman tier on our Patreon to get your own copy, as well as the first book on Space Fighters. Links in the description and pinned comment below. Hello everybody and welcome back to Space Talk. I'm Hujuana and today we're covering the sensors that real spacecraft might carry into combat, which are going to be using the electromagnetic spectrum. There are other kinds of sensor of course, for example ones that listen for gunshots to determine where the noise came from, or more obviously sonar that submarines use, but those both need a medium to travel through. In vacuum, you're stuck with the EM spectrum for your passive and active sensors. What's the difference between those? Active sensors send out a signal and then see what comes back, while passive sensors simply look or listen. You might also pick up radio communications, and though you may not be able to interpret a signal you catch due to encryption, you can determine the direction it came from. Even the amount, type and size of communications can be useful. If you want to know more about this sort of thing, you can look into signals intelligence. The other major job for passive sensors is looking for your enemy with telescopes, typically using infrared light. Visible light can work, but infrared automatically filters out cold, inert objects like asteroids, making it easier to focus on finding a hot spaceship radiating away waste heat from reactors, electronics and people. That said, there are ways to limit or hide your heat signature, which I covered in the stealth video. We'll come back to this later on. Now for active sensors, starting with LiDAR. Pretty simple, shoot a laser at something and time how long it takes for the backscatter to return to a separate sensor. That tells you distance from an object, and if you have a spinning LiDAR system, you can also determine direction, if you didn't already know they were there. Because of the short wavelength of laser light letting it bounce off really tiny things, LiDAR can make very detailed 3D scans of objects as well. Handy for knowing what you're looking at, what type of ship it is, which way it's facing, that sort of thing, as well as for for short distance navigation like docking. There might be other military applications as well, but it's difficult to say due to the overwhelming prevalence of radar for these roles. Regular old telescopes are fine for these purposes as well, especially for target identification. They can also be used to range find if you have more than one, and can be used directly in combat too, either to keep an eye on what a target is doing, or as an electro-optical sensor head on missiles. Radar works very similarly to LiDAR, but uses radio waves, and the emitter can be the receiver. You can get direction and distance data, but also movement through the pulse Doppler effect. Something moving towards or away from you will cause a change in the frequency in the radio waves you get back. There's a ton of other complicated things that go into how radars work, but that's the basics. It's great in atmosphere because radio waves are good at travelling through weather that blocks or distorts light, but that is strongly dependent on the specific frequency of the wave used since radar can range from 3 MHz to 110 GHz. There are some sub-ranges within this that interact with oxygen or water vapour, dramatically shortening their effective range, but can make them useful for detecting clouds or rain. It goes without saying that this isn't a problem for a spacecraft radar system unless it's looking down into an atmosphere. So you've found your target and you've closed to engage with them. What sensors are used in actual combat? You need to know highly accurate data on the opponent's range, velocity and direction of travel in order to put your weapons fire onto them most effectively, which is done with fire control radar, but I suppose you could use a LiDAR for this too. Or both, the more options the merrier, harder to jam and provides redundancy. These systems are smaller than a general search radar, but very focused, giving them precise tracking data for one specific object. Fire control radars are even more important in space thanks to the extreme ranges combat might end up taking place in. A similar sensor is radar that tracks outgoing weapons fire, as is the case with many close-in weapon systems. These follow what the actual rounds are doing and so can adjust to hit the target, and while there's no wind to correct for, there is the movement of the ship they're mounted on to consider. 
The opposite to these are warning receivers, passive sensors that tell you when you're being hit by the enemy's active sensors. Is something far out running its lidar over you? Maybe a fire control radar for their main gun? What about being illuminated for radar guided missiles? Automatic countermeasures can be deployed when these sensors go off, or the crew can make decisions on how to respond. Some of these warning receivers will be IR sensors, looking out for engine burns on missiles, enemy ships, or looking out for infrared lasers, or for tracking the temperature of an enemy's radiators. If their radiators are being saturated, then maybe they'll be unable to fight soon and try to disengage or have to surrender. But that applies to a longer battle, which may not even be a thing with how potentially fragile realistic combat ships might be. Passive IR sensors will also be used on some missiles, for all the same reasons they're great for long-range spotting of targets. But it may be possible to confuse these sensors with dazzlers or flares or such, but then it's also possible to make countermeasure resistant seekers. Back to radars now for a look at phased arrays, a multi-purpose and extremely clever bit of kit, essentially made up of multiple small radars working together. There's two primary types, Passive Electronically Scanned Array, or PACER, and Active Electronically Scanned Array, or ACER. The electronically scanned bit is the cool part, because it means the array can turn to look anywhere in a wide field of view with no moving parts practically instantly. To achieve this, phased arrays have many antennas that have their individual signals time-shifted ever so slightly from each other by computer, causing the outgoing collective wave to change direction. The difference between them is that PACER is older tech with only one transmitter for all the many antennas, so there's only one beam on one frequency. A way to improve this is to have multiple PACERs working together. ACERs are much more advanced, making use of smaller electronics to give every single antenna its own transmitter, and there can be thousands of these. This gives every ACER the ability to split off chunks of itself to create multiple beams of varying sizes and frequency, giving them some insane capabilities. They can scan their entire field of view extremely fast with multiple beams and can then lock and track a hilarious amount of individual targets. This capability means they could also replace the standard fire control radar. There's also the low probability of intercept mode, where they can exploit radar warning receivers signal filtering by jumping all over many frequencies to reduce the chances of it being noticed. ACEs are also harder to jam for the same reason. And that's not all! They can be used as radar warning receivers, or even high throughput data links. Oh, that's another thing with sensors. You don't have to completely rely on your own ones. You can receive data from other friendly assets for targeting or other things. A really easy example of this is the handheld laser designator. But you can do things like have one plane fire a missile and then hand it off to another that is aiming it. Great if your targeting system is all jammed up. If you watch the point defense video, you also know that you can make phased arrays out of lasers. So while it's technically challenging due to the teeny tiny size of parts because of the short wavelength of laser light, it's possible to have phased array LiDAR as well. But radar is just so much easier and cheaper, it's a mature technology we know lots about. That's the low and middle frequency parts of the spectrum. What about the other end? High energy X and gamma rays. There are sensors to pick those up, but the difficult part is generating them at high power levels. On top of that, X-ray scattering gives a very weak return signal, but the upside is that the noise floor is very low due to how few natural sources of X-rays there are. Even a tiny signal will stand out. There is another sensor that has X-rays, and it's a fun way of finding those stealth vessels I mentioned earlier. Nuclear bombs! Set a bunch of these off to create brief flashes of very bright light and lots of X-rays, brute forcing reflections off of even the darkest materials. Thanks Matterbeam for helping me understand these high energy things. One final and very important note is that a lot of these sensor options require an absolute ton of computing power. Something to run the radar, something to filter out noise, something to track the detections, something to process tracks, something to recognise signatures, and more. Throw in electronic warfare systems on top of that and it feels like half your ship is computers. It remains to be seen what will actually end up in use, but we can make educated guesses based on what was proposed for the Strategic Defence Initiative in the Cold War, updated with modern technology. You can support Space Dock by joining our Patreon where you can get our Frigate and Space Fighter design reference books. Alternatively, you can support us directly through YouTube by becoming a channel member. Thanks to our supporters and thank you for watching.